Now the times that we've been measuring so far are calendar times or some people would call them wall clock times. And you may be wondering, well, what other kind of time is there? Well, there's process time, the amount of time that the CPU has spent executing our process. One of the simplest ways of measuring this is with a library routine called clock. And that will return a clock T, that's basically an integer data type, which gives the elapsed processor time in microseconds. Notice that this does not include time taken by our child processors. We can get a, a more detailed breakdown by calling times. Now this takes a pointer to a TMS structure and in here we'll get the user time and the system time for both this process and for any of its children that have terminated and been waited for. Uh, that will all make more sense in the next module. Now the clock frequency that's used to make these measurements uh, is not an absolute constant but we can read it out with the call sysconf as shown here, we'll probably find it's 100 hertz. In other words, the time is in units of 10 milliseconds. Let's have a look at the TMS structure in detail. We'll see it contains fields for the user time, the system time, the user time consumed by our children, and the system time of our children. These are all clock T's. So what is this distinction between user time and system time that we keep talking about? Well, let me take you back to a diagram I showed you right back in lesson one. There we saw that the code that you and I write executes in user space. When we make a system call into the kernel, then that code executes in kernel space. So we can make a distinction between the time spent executing instructions in user space and time spent in the kernel executing instructions on behalf of this process. If we take a library routine like squirt, for example, that calculates square roots, that happens entirely in user space. It doesn't go into the kernel at all. Whereas a system call like write executes predominantly inside the kernel. Now this little program exists simply to show the measurement of process times. It begins by printing out the two clock frequencies that are relevant here. The uh, sysconf call returns the frequency that's used by the times system call which comes out at 100 hertz on this system. The second one prints out the frequency that's used by the clock system core, which comes out at 1 million, which is what the POSIX standard says it's supposed to be. If we come down to the bottom, and by the way, I've switched to viewing the code in gedit for no particularly good reason, uh, but you'll see that we call times here, and then we print out the four members of the structure that we get back user time system time child user time and child system time and then we print out the value returned by clock before we do that we have a little loop here just doing some busy work we're spinning around a loop doing a mathematical calculation the rather large number involved here is simply so that we build up enough process time to be able to get some meaningful measurements. Let's save that. And we'll compile it. The only thing to note here is that we need to specify the math library. That's the minus LM option on the end here. That's not loaded by default and we need it for the square root function. So now if we run it, The clock frequencies come back as we expect, and you'll see that the whole time is spent in user time. Uh, there is no system time because we're not making any system calls. Also, of course, the child times are all zero because we haven't created any children. The U time and the clock values are consistent. Just remember that one of them is in units of 
10 milliseconds and the other one is in microseconds. Now if you look at the code on the right you'll see that we have commented out here another block of busy work so let's uncomment that and instead we'll comment out the loop that we just timed. Now the difference here of course is that this busy work again we're just spinning around in a loop but it consists of a large number of calls onto the right system call so most of the time here is going to be spent executing down in the kernel. Save it, we'll recompile it and we'll run it again. And you see a somewhat different story here now. The dominant time here is the system time as we expect the amount of time in user space is relatively small. Again, if you add these two up, you will find it does agree with the value coming back from clock. So a nice demonstration there of the difference between system time and user time.